Hello everyone, this is Victor Momo from Excel Moments and it's been a moment. I mean, this video we want to talk about palindromes. The inspiration for this obviously was um, yesterday's date, which um, I'll just go here and do today minus one. You can see if you read this out, it's 12022021. If you read it from right to left, it's 12022021. That's essentially what the palindrome is. A string, a text, numbers that read the same from left to right and from right to left. Okay? So direction doesn't matter. Some people can take it further and talk about palindromic sentences, you know, where you have multiple words and all that. But uh, for this, we're just going to stick, you know, to, um, I would say words, which is just a text, a string, without having multiple uh, words in the expression so what we just want to do is come up with a formula that can tell us oh this is a palindrome this is not a palindrome that's really what it is um first of all i think i should just explain well the concept what the formula is going to look like is pretty easy essentially if i take madam for example i just need to have an expression that can extract for me each of the characters in there from right to left i have another expression that I can extract it from you know, uh, left to right and from right to left. Then I compare both of them. Oh, is this first character, the fifth character, is the second character, the fourth character, you know, and so on. And I will get, of course, true, false, true, false, true, false. I would sum it up or count the number of trues. If the number of trues equals the length of the string, then it's a palindrome. It means that everywhere I reversed, you know, the character, it was still the same. That's really the idea. So um, three functions we will need here, the mid function, sequence function, and length. So let's see how this is going to come up. Um, so first of all, we start with the mid. I can say mid of, um, you know, that text, madam. Um, I want to extract, of course, not just the first character, not the second one, all the way to the end. So I know I need, in this case, five characters. But if I do just five, then I'll be hard coding. It wouldn't work in some other cells. So what I do is I use the length of the string. So the sequence function can create that for me, right? Sequence function can create one, two, three, four, five. But I just feed it with length A2. So essentially, I'm just saying sequence of what? Five in this case. You can use your F9 to evaluate. And you see you have your one, two, three, four, five. And from each starting point, you extract one character. So from First character, extract one, second, extract one, and so on. Let's evaluate everything and see what we have here. So you can see we have what our uh, madam, just the way we want it. Okay, so now we need to reverse, you know, the string and pick the, um, the characters from that too. So how do we do that? Essentially, the expression is going to be similar to this. But rather than creating a sequence of one, two, three, four, five, you want to create a sequence of 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's easy to do. Sequence len A2 will give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If you do len A2 minus that, len A2 minus this, what happens? This is like saying 5 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's see what it evaluates to. I'm just going to evaluate just that portion. Okay. Yeah, I was going to just say I'm not wearing my glasses, so I might miss some of the brackets and so on. <laughs> so, please do bear with me. Uh, let me go with the shift. Okay. So, so you can see when you subtract everything from 5, you have 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, which is close to what you need. By the time you add 1 there, you have your 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So, you just need to add a 1. Yeah. Okay. And you've created the reverse sequence. Now, let's use... F9 to check what this whole thing X evaluates to. And you can see it's reversed. Why? Because the uppercase M is now at the end, whereas here it was at the beginning. Okay. So now it's just going to compare both of them and say, okay, is this, is this character the same as the last character and so on? So let's see what this evaluates to. Hmm? So you can see true, 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 true. So what I need to do now is to sum this all up and check if it's equal to the length of what the string. So I would say here sum, but of course, if I just sum true falses, that would fail because it expects numbers. So I can just do something like one times. So whatever I have in this 
um, evaluation here, it multiplies it by one. So the truth become one, the false become zero. And I sum it all up. Okay, you might want to see what one times does here. I like to use F9 a lot because it kind of makes me really see what's going on. Okay. So you can see that all those truths have become one, 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 one. So by the time you add them together, I will tell you, of course, the number of times, you know, it's true. And then you compare this with the length of the string. If it's equal to the length of the string, then it's obviously a palindrome, right? Because if it's true everywhere, then it's fine. So this is saying it's true, then you double click to come down. And you can see that this date, which is yesterday's date, is obviously true. Hannah is true. Uh, Tread is false, obviously. Grace false, and you know. And that's a simple expression to, uh, you know, check if you have a palindrome or not. The formula, actually, I would say is twice as difficult. Yes, so I wouldn't really say twice as difficult, but I mean you're taking up twice maybe the memory required for the computation or, uh, you know, it's like you're requiring twice the computational power that should be required. Why do I say so? You need to follow me on this. I don't need to check from the beginning to the end of the string to know if it's a palindrome. I just need to check to halfway. If it's fine halfway, midway in the string, then it's fine because it's really pretty much just repeating itself. Let's look at HANA, for example. You have six characters, three, four, five, six, okay? And I just go here, one, two, three, four, five, six. When I check, okay, I think I did some formatting there, control shift tilde. When I check if character one equals to character six, character two equals to five, three equals to four, at this point, pretty much, I've covered the entire string, right? Every other thing on this side is just mirroring what I have already because you have four and three, which is already taken care of three and four, five and two, which is two and five, six and one, which is one and six. It's pretty much the same thing. If all this is true, you know, then you're done. It takes a while to get the, this logic, but that's really what it is. So I don't need to check 100 characters if it's a string of 100. I just need to check 50. Okay, because it's more like saying a mirror image of itself. So if I split 100 into 50, 50, 50, if those 50 mirror themselves, then, you know, it's pretty much fine. So that's actually the more correct way to do it. But that will lead me into introducing maybe one other function to get, you know, the midpoint. Oh, okay. Rather than just stopping at len of A2, I'll be doing something like len of A2 divided by 2. You know, and maybe when it's an um, even number of... Um, characters versus when it's an odd number of characters and you know uh, stuff like that but yeah i just needed to put that out there you can think of it a little more and you kind of see what i'm saying so thank you for watching and um it's always nice to have a palindromic date i'm not going to tell you when the next one is you can come up with a formula to determine that so if you like this video hit the like button you can also subscribe to the channel excel moments and like i always say if you can think it excel most likely can do it so for now i'm out